Greetings, friends. This is Survival Doc. Today, we're going to make an aquaponics garden. I'm starting with the 60 gallon aquarium setup. Now, if you've been watching my videos, and if you know me, you know that I'm cheap, or I should say, I'm frugal. I wouldn't buy something like this new, it's far too expensive. This is something that I picked up at an estate sale. Now, this 60 gallon aquarium was on top of the stand, but to make my aquaponics unit, what I did was I moved the aquarium from the top of the stand to the bottom shelf, and the top of the stand will make a nice platform for my planter. This is what I decided to go with. I took one of my rain barrels and I cut it in half. Now, the rain barrel is a little bit short, but this does allow room for me to get into the aquarium to uh, feed the fish and to, to take care of the fish. And I just took my rain barrel and, and cut it in half lengthways. All right, if you do this sort of thing, what you want to make sure that you do is that you get a food grade barrel. Uh, some of these barrels had toxic chemicals stored in them. Uh, you want to know where your barrel came from. This barrel had a label on it. Uh, a lot of them come with labels on it. Uh, and the label said it was artificial peach flavoring, which means it was used in, I believe it was used in a, a bottling, uh, a, a soda bottling company. And uh, they purchased their ingredients in uh, these large barrels and they mixed them together to make their sodas. So even though artificial peach flavoring is not something I would particularly care to put into my body, uh, still it is uh, food grade. It is not toxic. Now I'm going to show you how I cut the barrel in half. Um, I searched before I did this. I did a search on YouTube, and I didn't find any really good videos on how to do this. Um, so I decided I'm going to add that part to my video and how to cut a barrel in half. By cutting a barrel in half, you end up with two planters. All right, I wanted the bung hole at the bottom here rather than having it up here somewhere. Now, you, the trick is to find the halfway point to cut your barrel exactly in half. Now, these barrels have a seam going on each side. This is where the barrel is put together. Now, you could slice your barrel in half using that seam, but as you would see, it goes right through your bung holes. So the way that I found the center is I measured from this seam around the barrel to the other seam, found that measurement, divided it in half, and measured that distance from the seam to the side of the barrel and marked it. Did the same thing over here, took my straight edge and drew the line down each side, then extended that line across the top, and voila. Now I cut this barrel with my circ circular saw and it cut it cut just perfectly fine with my circular saw here I will warn you a lot of people have this type of blade on your circular saw it has a larger teeth with the carbide teeth on it this blade is great for cutting wood for cutting your barrel you would do a lot better if you use this type of blade with the um, small tooth. Uh, this blade is designed to cut things like paneling where you don't splinter their wood real bad. And uh, I just found it, it cut the barrel just perfectly, perfectly easily. All right, once I cut the barrel in half, then I just took some sandpaper, just kind of smoothed down the edges. And using that blade, the edges were fairly smooth, but I took a little sandpaper and smoothed it down the rest of the way. You want to make sure that your plug is in here real tight because when you fill this with water, you don't want water dripping out of here. Okay, my next step was to put the automatic siphon unit in here. All right, I want to find, I turn the barrel over, I want to find the middle of the barrel. In this case, we can use the seam that will be the exact middle of the bottom of the barrel. 
So measure the distance across here, divide it in half to get the center point. All right, this seam doesn't show up on the other side of the barrel very well, so I'm going to drill a pilot hole through here from this side. Then I'm going to use my, I guess it's called a, a hole saw, I think is what this is called. Put this on the end of my electric drill, and I'm going to drill a hole this size because that is the size that I need for my vault head adapter. And once I get the hole drilled, I will stick the bulkhead adapter through. This gasket goes on the outside. This part screws on the other side. Reverse thread here. And then I'll put an adapter here to put my PVC pipe on. Here's the adapter. This will screw right into this on the inside of the barrel. And this adapter is three quarter inch, allows my three quarter inch PVC pipe to plug into it. And I'll tighten this down, of course, and uh, we'll go over the uh, siphon pump uh, a little bit later. Okay, I've got my bulkhead adapter screwed in now. The rubber gasket on the outside, as the instructions say. This part screwed in very tightly on the inside. Now this thing is threaded for this PVC adapter. And I'm screw this in here and then I can put my three quarter inch PVC pipe in here. Okay, this pipe is going to be my siphon pipe. So I want the top of this pipe, the, the top of this pipe is going to determine the water level when this fills up. I want the water level to be about one and a half to two inches from the top here. I'd say two inches, I'm gonna go two inches from the top here. And so that's where I wanna cut this pipe off. So I'm going to, make a mark here. This would be the very top of the container and then I'm going to measure two inches below that mark and that's where I'm going to cut it off and then that way it'll maintain the water level at two inches beneath the edge. Okay I decided to actually cut off three inches of this pipe so that the top of this pipe would be three inches from the edge of the planter here. And the reason for that is I decided I want an inch of space here uh, above the gravel level so the gravel isn't knocked out of the planter. So we have an inch there, the gravel begins, and then we have two inches of gravel uh, to the water level. Okay, for the next part of the siphon, I have some one and one half inch PVC pipe and it's going to fit over this pipe like so and I'm going to cut this pipe to where the top is about the same as the top of this one and then I'm going to put this cap on the top of this part which will fit over there like this and I'll explain how that works once we get this done. Okay, this is how the siphon works. As the water level increases here, inside this pipe, the water begins to pour inside the drain pipe. But we have this cap on this part to create the siphon. As the water begins to fall down through this pipe, it creates a siphon because of this cap on here, and it pulls water up from the bottom, and it drains the water all the way to here. 
All right, then here, once the water level reaches here, the siphon is broken. It begins to fill again from the water pump and it starts to cycle all over. Siphons, drains to here, fills up, drains to here, fills up, drains to here. Because you don't want the roots of your plants to be continuously soaked in water. They'll get waterlogged. Uh, for most plants, that's not good for them. The, the plants need air, so what this does is it allows some water time for the roots and some air time for the roots. Now, to make sure there's good flow down here at the bottom of this thing and that nothing clogs that up, I'm going to just cut a few slits here in the bottom just to allow water to easily flow through here. Okay, I just cut a couple of slits and a couple of notches in the bottom of that so that the water would flow in freely. And this basically is the automatic siphon. The only part left is this here that goes on the outside like this. And this is simply, and I'll cut this off level with the top of the planter here. And this is left open at the top. And this is simply to keep gravel out of this system here so that the water can flow up freely into the siphon. So I'll just measure the top of my container here on this pipe and then just cut this pipe off level or just slightly above perhaps. Um, with the edge of the planter. And there you have it. There's the siphon pump as far as the inside is concerned. And what's left is the bottom side where I will just put another three-quarter inch adapter in here and I'll cut a short piece of pipe here for the drain and the reason that I want this piece of pipe here is because the longer that pipe is here the better uh, suction you'll get when the water starts falling through it has further to fall through to create a better suction uh, to create and uh, maintain the siphon and there we have the completed unit. All we have to do is add our lava rock or our gravel, fill the system with water, put our fish down here in the aquarium. We'll put a water pump in the aquarium here with a hose from the water pump coming up, pouring water into here. This will fill up with water to this point water will start pouring in here where it will drain back down into the fish tank and with this on it as the water starts pouring in here it will create a vacuum which will create a, a suction which will create a siphon and the siphon will drain the tank all the way down to here. All right, here air will enter the siphon, which will break the siphon. Well, I hooked up my system and filled it with water, and I tested it and uh, found out that my siphon doesn't work. And the problem is, of course, that this pipe here where the water falls through is not long enough. The way a siphon works is the weight and the suction from the water falling through the pipe is what pulls the water up the other pipe on the other side. And apparently this piece of pipe here is not long enough. The problem, of course, is my aquarium is right beneath this. 
So what my solution is going to be is I've bought some of these elbows and I'm going to come off of here and make a longer pipe, sort of a stair step type to extend the length of this pipe but going around like this uh, and we'll see how that works. Okay, here's my solution to the siphon problem. As you can see, I extended the length of this siphon hose. And to deal with the space limitations, I curved it. And I have it, each section is sloping slightly downward to use gravity. Of course, siphon works by gravity uh, and the weight of water flowing through the pipe. So this is downhill. Once I turn this over again, this is the bottom that we're looking at. Okay, we'll see how this works. Okay, we have the water in the aquarium. We have the water pump running. The water is flowing, filling the planter. We'll get the siphon ready to work. And I, I did end up cutting some slits in the bottom of this to make sure that we had good water flow. So all we have to do now is wait for the water to fill the tank and see if the siphon starts working. Uh, one other thing while we're waiting for that I'll mention is you'll notice that I'm using a blue barrel here. Now I have white barrels and I have blue barrels and the problem with the white barrels is it lets light shine through and what you'll end up with is you'll end up with algae growing inside this planter in other words, algae will start growing on the rocks in here, and you don't really want that. You can see here the white plastic, how the light, how the light shines through the white plastic, but it doesn't shine through the dark plastic. For a planter like this, I see a lot of people using the white plastic barrels, and they'll work, I'm sure. But if you have the darker barrels, such as this blue one here, it actually will work out better because of that reason. Okay, I have a 140 gallon per hour pump running here and it took about 20, 25 minutes to fill this. Of course it won't take as long once I get the gravel in here. According to my calculations the siphon should kick on at about 3 inches so we got a little bit to go here. About another inch to go. When that water level gets up to the top of that dome there, the siphon should be kicking on. Okay, it's almost at three inches. Water's almost there. Should start draining in just a minute. And there she goes.
The siphon is working and it's draining. Well, I finally got my siphon to where it would start okay every time. And then I ran into the problem of getting the siphon to stop or getting the siphon to break. What would happen is it would just reach an equilibrium where the water inflow was the same as the water outflow. So I did a little research, looked at some more YouTube videos, and this is an idea that I found. I drilled a hole in my cap here, inserted an elbow and a piece of tubing so that when the water level falls down to here, it'll break that suction. Also another thing you can do is take a little medicine bottle like this if you need to and put this in here so that when the water drains down it just has to suck the water out of this bottle here before it breaks the uh, suction. And then you can also trim this off if you need to adjust this, trim the bottle here. I don't know if this part is necessary, but I've got that ready as a standby. But anyway, I thought this was a pretty good idea. So we'll give that a try. The other thing that I learned was that this drainage system down here, the siphon system, does not need to be at such a sharp angle downward just an ever so slight incline helps the uh, suction work better if it's too much of an incline then the water doesn't create a good suction because the pipe doesn't fill with water the water flows out of the pipe too quickly and the pipe doesn't fill which which is required for the suction to be created that starts the siphon so I adjusted these pipes. Fortunately, I didn't glue them together. I just fitted them together so I could make adjustments to it. But it just needs ever so slight incline to get that siphon to work. And perhaps no incline at all. It, it probably would work just fine if it was level with no incline. The siphon might actually start quicker if I did that. But it's working now. Now we need to fill, fill it with the pea gravel plants. Get my fish, put my light system up, and we'll be ready to start growing. I'm using the clay pebbles. At first I used the pea gravel and I found that the pea gravel was so heavy that I was afraid my system was going to be too heavy for my aquarium stand here. So instead of using the pea gravel I went out and got some clay pebbles. Very 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 lightweight compared to the gravel. The problem with these is they float. And as the water rises, the pebbles rise, and as the water settles, the pebble, pebbles settle, and it's disrupted to the roots of the plant. So my solution was to put the plants in these pots here. So even though the pots will shift around, at least the roots won't be disturbed so much. Now the floating pebbles are still a problem because as the... Um, as the pebbles move around, these pots tend to shift and lean over, and I would not recommend floating pebbles. I have a source now for clay pebbles that are supposed to not be floating, and I'm going to get some of those and replace uh, these pebbles eventually with the clay pebbles that don't float. So if you are going to use a system like this where you have the water that rises and settles and rises and settles. I would not recommend the floating pebbles. I would use something that does not float. 
you can see I um, installed my lighting system. I'm using three of the four foot shop lights. I put LED light bulbs in here to cut back on electricity usage and uh, put it on a timer. So now we're fully operational. This is Survival Doc, reminding you, be prepared or be prepared to be fleeced.